Dinner is served. I'm so happy to see that this deck is here. We have Abyss Actors, Dinosaurs. All right, I'm kind of digging what's present for today. Do you guys smash the even crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content? Hi, good old Noveles. Um, so you guys love getting the chance to serve up your opponents on the brand new ideas, right? Well, this deck showcases some of the uh, the finer things that you can actually do. And the first thing I want to point out down here is yield final attack orders. Yes, all phase of monsters on the field go to attack mode and their battle positions cannot be changed. All right, so this actually is uh, kind of a little cute interaction, forcing everything into attack mode and just kind of um, forcing some interactions can get very, very cheesy in here. Now, remember, you are playing the good old confrontation, so you can actually do the interactions with the Corvature down here. I still think this deck is one of the coolest ideas that they, they tried to bring to the forefront of things. You know, you're basically using this archetypal stuff to kind of help the deck out um, in maybe some crazier ways to try to make it functional. And, you know, hey, your opponent has monsters, which means all of your little ritual stuff can kind of start to level up and tag up so you can do your thing. Also, this build had 58 cards. I don't think that's particularly a bad thing. You gotta remember at the end of the day, though, that you have to try to find the most optimal ways to do things. And of course, the Diviner of the Herald here. Yep, this deck uh, can get very, very cheesy for the things it can do, especially, you know, hey, suddenly you were dropping this. Now uh, we're getting kind of interesting. Also, hmm, these are some cool, actually, even with a wallow here, you have some incredibly cool ideas present for this. And I like that. That's so cool to see. All right, next up here, we have Abyss Acties. Now, Abyss Actors, I think uh, I think sometimes this deck can be hit or miss. Uh, I think out of last format, we only ran into two to three of this deck that actually was kind of showing up in the meta, but that, that's not a bad thing, all right? Um, you just kind of got to keep in mind that if you're expecting Abyss Actors to be this consistent monster all the time, no, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, I do see here that this build was forced to rely on Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries because... Unfortunately, you know, uh, this will probably end up changing out here in the near future as things kind of adapt towards things. But, you know, your extra deck options, depending on, I, I'm going to say, like, this is always going to be impacted by, one, how you think your localized meta is going to be, and two, how you think the regional meta is going to kind of shape up for you. Um, you know, especially when you are looking at the regionals and planning on playing at that higher tier level, you can run into some interesting things along the way. So it's it's kind of what the Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries is for. It gives this deck the chance to kind of curve out some of the more eh, terrible weaknesses that it could have. Maybe Vanquish Soul, the things that rely on their extra deck kind of try to put them in a lot better of a position and of course i mean let's not forget you know the ability to use some of the more detrimental effects of these uh these uh abyss scripts so you can kind of go ahead and punish your opponent now we also saw a build fairly recently that was able to tell the opponent no with the continuous trap card um and that's kind of cute um outside of that um the double skill drains kind of tacky i kind of want to play the third just to have it, but you can get away with the two, I feel like. Just a little bit interesting. Dinosaurs. Okay, so first of all, Dino Power has uh, has a lot to be desired right now. I, let's just call it what it is, all right? Like, I'm not taking anything away from the dinosaur players out here. Um, you know that this build does kind of struggle with some of the uh, the more immediate things in the meta. And that's, once again, not a bad thing. Um, this build's kind of forcing itself to rely on things like Forbidden Droplets to kind of curve out the boards. I mean, you gotta go second, or be able to go second with this deck. Obviously, things like Droll Knock, Droll Knock, where does our, in the Ash, those are our only two hand traps. 
Okay, so we're putting all of our faith into our board-breaking capabilities of the droplets and our two of talents. We have no thrust in here as well. So that's that's something major that you got to consider. Actually, this build brings in more of its hand traps. I mean, we have crows and we have the space rocks along the way here as well. Ugh, you know, you got a little bit of room, I guess, to decide how you want to explore this, but I don't know. This this feels a little bit weak, you know. You, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. I think the dinosaurs do have a good potential for the meta. It's just people got to figure out how they want to change things up. Dinosaurs are always going to rely on their tech choices. I mean, obviously the Fire Opalhead versus the Frazosaurus is one of the, the relatively newer choices that I feel like we end up seeing in modern era. But okay, you know, it just comes down to where are we going to go from here? How will we evolve and so forth? Also, now this deck has two Pankratops. That's kind of a scary thing. They could already bring it off of the double evolution pill. Now they can sack you with two. All right, so that's uh, it's going to be something I can't wait to lose to. Next up here we have ah the Buster Blader. Good stuff. Now this actually caught my attention because um, Buster Blader Dragon Link has been very very quiet. Um, it uh, it's not exactly a, a huge trendsetter out here, but I saw a Zodiac match. Excuse me, yeah, no, it was a Kong's Cards match actually, a while back. We saw the Buster Lock tear through an opponent here. Yeah, this is this Buster Blader right here, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, actually is a threatening card. Who would have guessed? I also see that we're playing one of the Grand Tusk Dragon on normal or special, target up to two other cards on the field, destroy them, and this thing gets uh, 600 attack for each. Okay, so uh, you get some actual pretty good value off of this guy. Also, it is a level 8, and uh, hey, that does work on special. So that's actually pretty important here. Um, I also see that we are playing an Amorphage Goliath. Oh boy, neither player can special summon from their extra decks, except for Amorphage monsters. You know, maybe someday that will be relevant. But for now, you look at that and you're like, oh, yeah, soft locking. Yeah, that's pretty good. You know, once again, you come down to this point, you're like, ah, your opponent cannot. All right. Absolutely beautiful. Um, outside of that, um, signing your talents, no thrust in this. Um, the drolls are pushed down here to the side. You're playing 47 as well. Once again, 47 is fine for this deck. Um, you don't really see a lot of major changes, but okay. And also, since you are playing a base Dragon Link package, you can see this deck kind of get the chance to take advantage of, uh, well, the multitude of broken things that you would not normally get to see, but good boss monster, Goldberg. All right, well, what else do we have back here? We have Cyber Dragons. What in the world? Where'd this come from? Um, so we're playing two copies of the Cyber Pharos. So you can special summon this by tripping a machine monster. Sure. Once we turn during our main phase, we can fusion summon a machine fusion monster from our architect using monsters from our hand and or field as material. Sure. When a fusion monster controls is destroyed by battle, we can banish this card from our graveyard to add a power bond from our deck to our hand. Oh, I see. I see. This is just consistency to hit our opponent with a power bond OTK on a follow-up turn. Well, you know, that's it's kind of cheesy, I suppose. You uh, you have a lot more options, I suppose. You take advantage of the little OTKs that you get along the way. Okay, I, I, I see you. This is this is cool. I wish we. I wish we had a look at the side deck here so we could actually see what was going on inside the mind of this duelist, you know. But you don't really, you don't get that right now. You just get a basic streamline. You have a cool little tech choice here. Obviously, the Cybernetic Fusion supports a busted card when it actually, you know, you can do full combo off and get things going. But for now, I, I'm about this. I think that this is one of the more interesting places that you can kind of take this deck. It's Cyber Dragons. It's OTK or bust. So what do you guys think about these decks? Please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. If you have seen anything be successful, if you've been successful, reach out to me on social media. I'd love the chance to cover it. And I'll see you beautiful faces back here in the day, guys.
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.